All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for this opportunity uh, to uh, present in front of such a very distinguished audience. Uh, so uh, based on the questions that I heard in some of at the end of the earlier uh, talk, I thought I would take a couple of minutes before getting into my presentation itself about some of the kinds of uh, things that TCS does in terms of collaboration. Uh, see, my uh, talk was primarily aimed at giving you an overview of the life sciences research at TCS, but I'm going to kind of deviate from that and give you a, a couple of minutes on what we do in terms of collaboration. So we have a very formal collaboration program called COIN, which is a co-innovation network uh, where we work with uh, both industry and academic partners in a collaborative mode. And uh, a specialization of the COIN program itself is the academic COIN. And so our collaborations with uh, uh, universities and academia in general uh, really uh, spans many uh, uh, different uh, orders of magnitude. Uh, so at the at the very early at the very lowest levels, there is a lot of uh, uh, stuff that we do in terms of funding PhD fellowships and so on. Uh, all of the usual things like hiring of interns and postdocs uh, and so on. That that is also something that we do. Uh, on a very regular basis. At the next level, we have a uh, person-to-person collaborative uh, uh, projects uh, where uh, two people, uh, one of the PIs from TCS and one of the PIs from a, a university happen to uh, have a common interest in working together and they might just work together and publish. And so there it's really about just providing uh, the kind of uh, specific uh, expertise that complements each other and they kind of work together to uh, do useful things. Uh, this can be a little bit more formalized where we actually fund research. Uh, we, we typically don't do what is called a sponsored research where we just give a grant uh, to an academic institution or a, someone to solve a problem. Uh, we stay engaged in it uh, right through. Uh, so there is this uh, uh, PI to PI collaborations that we do, uh, where there are specific problems that are uh, of in mutual interest, and we work on them. This can include funding in terms of uh, whatever, for incidentals, for travel, for uh, hiring of people and postdocs and so on, as well as uh, people from TCS working on these projects. In all these cases, we expect that the, there'll be a very uh, close-knit working relationship uh, between the two groups. Uh, this can go a little bit uh, further where we actually do, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, institute to institute uh, collaborations. And I believe that was one of the questions that came up. And so we have a number of examples of that uh, where we have, uh, for example, such arrangements with uh, the Indian Institute of Science. Uh, we have it with several of the IITs uh, where there is an institute level uh, uh, agreement between TCS and the Institute, and there is a certain amount of uh, funding money set aside uh, uh, every year. And uh, uh, people from TCS and from the uh, university or institute write projects, joint projects, and these are then evaluated and they get funded and so on. So there, are, there is really a broad canvas of uh, uh, engagement possibilities in terms of uh, collaborations between uh, uh, TCS and academic institution. So I just wanted to give that a uh, short intro before I went ahead with the rest of my talk. I'll be happy to take any questions later on. I'll also keep this talk very brief. Uh, uh, at TCS, we have about a, diff a dozen different research programs or research areas. Uh, many of the traditional things that you would think of in terms of uh, computing uh, uh, companies, so cyber uh, security, uh, foundations of computing, uh, software systems, and so on. But we also have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we also have uh, research programs in the physical sciences and the life sciences, uh, behavioral sciences, and so on. Uh, in the physical sciences, for example, we are looking at novel materials and so on. In the life sciences, we are looking at uh, many different areas. And uh, so this chart that I have is uh, supposed to be illustrative of that. Uh, we work on a number of areas, starting from analyzing biological sequences all the way to drug uh, design and uh, uh, and everything in between. And as uh, we go through the presentation, I'll kind of illustrate the various areas we work in. 
not all of these areas require or use uh, deep learning and uh, machine learning, but increasingly, almost all of them are uh, using deep learning and machine learning. Uh, so one of the areas that we work in genomics is in uh, both foundational as well as applied. Uh, so for example, we work on uh, uh, building uh, uh, pan genomes, which is not just a single reference genome, but actually a collection of genomes uh, analyzed as a graph. And then how do you do alignment of uh, short or long DNA sequences onto these graphs? This is a problem that comes straight from computer science. And so these are some of the problems that we are interested in. But we are also interested in the application of these kinds of technologies to real life situations. Uh, so we work with, uh, with uh, clinicians. And this is an example of our work with uh, the University of California, Berkeley, and UC San Francisco Medical School, uh, where we have used these kinds of technologies to identify uh, uh, mutations that cause lead to disease. So for diagnostic purposes, <clears throat> taking that a one uh, taking that one step further, we have also looked at uh, uh, can you use genome information by itself uh, to predict uh, any uh, diseases that a newborn might have, and uh, uh, in all of these uh, algorithm development and computing, and increasingly more machine learning and deep learning play an important part, right? Because you are trying to establish whether a particular variation or mutation is going to be disease causing. Uh, <clears throat> on the other side, we also uh, work very closely here in India with the Tata Medical Center at Calcutta, where we have set up a, a translational cancer research center, where we are looking at many different problems, primarily from an Indian context, uh, Indian point of view. How do we get uh, better care for uh, patients in India when it comes to uh, various cancers? Are there India-specific uh, uh, genotypes or mutations or driver mutations that lead to cancer. And also there are some neglected cancers or infrequent cancers worldwide, but are kind of more prevalent here. So things like uh, gallbladder cancer. So for that, uh, can we actually build organoid models? Uh, so grow gallbladder cancer organoids in the lab. How do we establish that these gallbladder cancer organoids are actually reflective of the actual uh, uh, cancer in the patient. So we go, how do we grow these organoids from the patient tissue? How do we establish that they are uh, in fact uh, replicating what is happening in the patient? And then how can we then go ahead and try a different set of cocktail of drugs against this uh, to get uh, the appropriate care for the patient? So there are a number of uh, these kinds of problems that we involve, uh, are involved in. All, again, all of these in, uh, involve analyzing large volumes of genomics data, uh, both uh, uh, expression as well as uh, uh, sequence data, and also more uh, uh, recently, a uh, bit of proteomics data. Also. And so bringing all of this data together and doing the analysis requires uh, uh, new types of uh, computational approaches and algorithms. Yeah. Uh, a third area of research uh, focuses in the whole area of the microbiome. And so in each one of these uh, examples that I'm illustrating, I'm trying to kind of point out uh, the kinds of collaborations we do. Uh, so here is an example of uh, looking at uh, uh, transethnic uh, prevalence and uh, signatures for type 2 diabetes. This is done uh, in collaboration with the Moons uh, Research Institute in Chennai and also with the Novo Nordisk uh, Foundation uh, in Denmark. Uh, where we had Indian cohorts and uh, Danish cohorts and looking at the uh, microbiome in uh, pre-diabetic, uh, non-diabetic and diabetic patients and trying to classify and uh, those samples and find signatures uh, for uh, the uh, either the emergence or the lack thereof of diabetes in these patients. Another area of uh, interest for us is in the whole area of systems and network biology. Again, these are all uh, projects that we do collaboratively. For example, the uh, tuberculosis project, looking at the host guest interactions and trying to understand the uh, underlying biology and uh, <clears throat> uncover new biology was, uh, was a project done with several different Indian institutions, all of whom were funded by uh, funding institutes in India, but we don't uh, get funding from them. We contribute time and resources uh, to execute those projects. Uh, similarly, we work with, uh, for example, the Mount Sinai Hospital, uh, where we have looked at 
uh, uh, examples of uh, disease arising from mutations in a protein called the uh, HMBS, uh, which is involved in the porphyrin synthesis and so on. Again, this is an example of a collaboration of a researcher to researcher uh, that just happened because two people met and thought they could work together. And finally, there is also another example of research, which is, which is kind of collaboration in the wild, uh, if you will. And these are where there are public challenges like the dream challenges and so on, uh, where we also participate. And there is an exchange of ideas that happens as a consequence of that. And each one learns from one another. Uh, but the idea in all of this is that we, we contribute to these projects, both in terms of time and resources. In some cases, we also contribute in terms of funding. But at the end of it all, we, uh, the, the outcomes are uh, publications uh, in various uh, fora. <clears throat> uh, I heard uh, quite a bit of discussion on uh, uh, protein structures and RNA structures and uh, alpha fold and so on. Uh, earlier in the day. So that is, again, another area of uh, research that, uh, that we engage in, again, in collaboration, uh, looking at the dynamics of uh, proteins and uh, how, how we may use molecular dynamic simulations to explain uh, various catalytic phenomena that happen in, uh, uh, in proteins. And here you want to use a mix of uh, straight conventional molecular dynamics and also some aspects of it you might want to use uh, quantum chemistry concepts. So there's a mixed mode hybrid kind of uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulations that we do. And finally, uh, uh, the most uh, extensive use of uh, deep learning in our group has been in this whole area of drug design. And so we have uh, now several publications in this area of using deep learning for de novo drug design, uh, for doing multi-parameter optimization and also kind of understanding what the models are actually uh, picking up as important. And we want to uh, get to a stage where we have these explainable models. And so the explainable models are uh, at the level where we are able to tell a medicinal chemist or a bench chemist, uh, here are the certain groups that are contributing to your activity, or here are certain groups that are leading to toxicity and so on. And so uh, these are uh, some of the things that we are doing in terms of interpretable machine learning models uh, in the most uh, in the last one year or so, <clears throat> and finally, we uh, the, the thing that I haven't mentioned is we are applying many of the same concepts uh, to design of proteins and uh, RNA, about which also I heard uh, earlier uh, this morning. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions now or later. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Srinivasan. Are there any questions? Yeah, uh, Yogesh, may I may I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to it's actually a comment. Uh, we've uh, for the square kilometer array project, we have worked quite extensively with TCS uh, uh, in its TRDDC avatar. Uh, yes. We had Dr. Swaminathan and Dr. Shubro Rai Choudhury uh, work with us over a period of several years between 2011 and 2014. Uh, working on the concept design for the square kilometer array telescope. So the work with NCRA and their 40 IFR uh, uh, goes back uh, in the astronomy domain as well, uh, many years. Absolutely, and I'm aware of that. Swaminathan is a good friend of mine, yes. And yeah. we've discussed it at several times, yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Koti from uh, TAFR. So I have a question uh, regarding uh, protein design. So uh, are you interested in, uh, for example, like we work a lot experimentally on uh, making proteins which are mechanically robust, like I spoke in the morning. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to, this is a very, I mean, narrow, <clears throat> most people are typically not much interested because uh, it's not a really wide range problem. So I'm trying to see that whether deep learning or AI methods, you know, which might definitely have impact because uh, right. so then we do not have to really, I mean, uh, screen more proteins, you know, so then that basically gives us a smaller set of uh, proteins. Absolutely. So the person from my, from our group who leads that Dr. Sarna is actually attending this uh, meeting and immediately after your talk, she also messaged me saying, 
uh, this sounds interesting we should talk further about this and so yeah i think there will be there, there is uh, quite a good case for us to uh, talk about this in detail because the one of the big uh, issues is how does um, you know, how do mutations affect stability function of protein and that is a question that we are very interested in and uh, there are numerous approaches one can take towards that and uh, there are also the, um, current approaches which rely on lots of databases of existing uh, uh, measurements and uh, not all of that data might be actually appropriate for building some of these models because uh, some proteins are two state folders most of them in those databases but i am given to understand there are a lot of uh, interesting proteins are actually not two state uh, proteins and so uh, those kinds of things might require a different uh, data set on which to actually build models and so to the extent that uh, you are generating such data and we have an interest and uh, experience in analyzing such data this could uh, this is well worth talking more about thank you